Hello, my wonderful people. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on your time zone or anytime you are coming across this platform, Linda TV Show. If it is your first time and you like what we are doing here, after watching this video, kindly subscribe, put on your notification bell to all notifications. In that way, you will be able to know when we upload a new video. I want to appreciate YouTube for creating this wonderful platform which we are using to disseminate information to the members of the public. At the same time, I want to put a disclaimer that here in Linda's TV show, I do not promote violence, I do not promote hate speech, I do not promote misleading information. Myself, I don't like it. We react to all forms of videos. So, I also want to remind YouTube that a call for self-determination is never a call for war. So, he's, he's sounding like he's answerable more to ECOWAS than to Nigerians. We in Nigeria, 78% of the landmass of Nigeria, seven states, and 19 states in this country are saying no to an unprovoked war with Niger. It's not ECOWAS. His primary responsibility is to Nigerians, not to ECOWAS. He's not convinced us why he should send boots to the ground in, 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 in Niger Republic. And for goodness sake, where are you going to get the truth from? The Nigerian military is stretched all across, deployed all across the 36 states of this country. Where is he going to get the troops from? Is he going to pull troops from the northwest or the northeast or the southeast? The only place there is some leeway is the southwest. And that will be a small number of troops. And he should be very, very careful. That is what I wrote there. He is going to do the bidding of the western world. The fight in Niger is not our fight. It is going to be a proxy war between Russia and NATO. And this is what concerns me the most. We are being surrounded by countries now where you are having this proxy war between these two countries. And we are going to do their bidding. President Bola Ahmed Tinibu has not even settled down. He doesn't even have his team and is declaring war without consulting the people, without the consent of the people. Okay. Now, we say no to war and we are not going to support any war. Okay, I get your point. Uh, you had a number of recommendations, one of which is that diplomacy should be uh, the best option. Where that diplomacy, as ECOWAS chair, uh, President Tinubu had the liaise with President Patrice Talon of, uh, of uh, Republic of Benin. He was the first person to go there. President Idris Deby of uh, Chad was also sent there. Um, the chief of... Uh, Air staff of Nigeria and a former governor of uh, Kasina State, Amenu Masari, and one other were also sent there. Uh, they didn't make progress. Only this week, uh, General Abdul Salami Abubakar and the Sultan were also uh, sent, you know, as a delegation, as part of a delegation to talk to the coup cool leaders. In fact, they were not even granted the uh, audience. So that diplomatic option has been, uh, has been pursued. It has failed. Are you suggesting? That if the other ECOWAS chiefs, ECOWAS presidents, now that their army, army chiefs have met, if they decide to go ahead, Nigeria should just pull out. How would that make us look? No, I am say no, I'm saying if they decide to go, that will be wrong, wrong decision. And if President Bola Ahmed Tinubu takes the decision as the chairman of ECOWAS to go to war, he's doing that on his own. No, but I'm saying that it's not, not a unilateral, it for not a unilateral no, no. decision. No, 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 no. It's a group decision. No, no. Nigeria, no. No. Nigeria is Nigeria. And he is governing 200 million people. We have to give him approval to do that. Even if he's the chairman of, 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 uh, of, of ECOWAS. The president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is more relevant to us than being the chairman of ECOWAS. We are we that know are telling him things that his advisors will not tell him that going to war, sending troops into Niger Republic will be a disaster. Unprovoked. We have had our own share of military uh, takeovers in Nigeria. Nobody sent troops to us. What of Mali? What of Guinea? What of Burkina Faso? What of that Chad? That was the place where the fr French president was there babysitting the current president. Nobody sent troops there. 
We need to be very, very careful. Is there an internal problem? And we should be able to help them. And the reason why we are saying negotiations do not help, at the very beginning, you are putting on the table the threat of violence, the threat of force, and you are asking the other party to listen to you. You have brought your last trump card at the very beginning. There's no way to do it. And it's showing the inexperience of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu on the international scene. He has not been properly advised. He does not have his team to advise him properly. You do not do that. Okay, let's say you roll in your tanks, if you have them, into Nigeria Republic. What do you do? What do you do? You install Bazoom by force and you stay there and keep him by force? We have seen the United States going to Iraq, going to Afghanistan, saying they are going to bring democracy. Yeah, where are they now? We need to be very, very, very careful. Military option is not the option. We have to. My recommendations are, first of all, take that threat of violence off the table because that is what is making them more entrenched into their positions. That's why they refuse to see our, our, our elders. You are saying you're going to hit them and you're going to talk to them. Why are you here then? Take the threat of violence off the table. Start serious and sincere negotiation. And most importantly is, how are you going to help them solve this problem, which is an internal problem? By solving this problem is that, how are we going to do it? What is going to happen to Bazoom? The safety of Bazoom and his family must be paramount. What is going to happen after that? What do Nigerians want? Do we want this military for how long? How can we pressure, we, the ECOWAS and the international community, pressure the junta? to have a timetable to transition to a democratic rule as soon as possible without the threat of violence. And essentially, ECOWAS has declared war. They have closed borders. They have closed uh, airspace. They have uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu unilaterally, unilaterally broke the treaty between Nigeria and Nigeria that was signed in 1960 that Nigeria will be supplying uh, Niger Republic with uh, electricity. Nigeria currently supplied 70% of electricity to Niger Republic. In exchange, Niger Republic will not dam River Niger up front, up, upstream. If they dam River Niger upstream, we'll all be dry. We won't have Kainji Dam. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu unilaterally, without reverting to the Congress, uh, 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 broke that, that, that treaty. Now the capital, the mayor, is in darkness. And you are saying, uh, we, we are going to... This is a country that, that has 40% of its budget is foreign aid. Biden sanctions, you close their borders, no-fly zone, you close, uh, you, you cut electricity. Well, what uh, is at stake is more than just what we see. Where we don't understand. The president needs to be Prof. properly briefed. Prof. And he isn't. He doesn't look like he is. Prof. My brothers and sisters, I think let us be a bit realistic about what is going on in the world today. Many years ago, in Berlin, Europeans sat down and subdivided our continent at time separating a brother from our sister. After they finished doing that and colonizing us, they went ahead and taught us to fear, hate, and keep away from each other. So you are my neighbor, but I fear you, and I want to mingle with you. Let me give you an example and use a few African examples. Today, it is easier for a European to travel within Europe without requirement of a visa. They can trade, make money, visit each other, spend money, and the European Union area, and they make a lot of money, they're becoming rich and rich every day. In Africa, our former colonies, and what they taught us, still prevails. Then they mingle among each other. Today in Africa, the reality is that for an African to visit a European nation, an ordinary African, to visit an European nation, is like, let me give you an example my teacher used to use. It's like trying to milk an elephant because of the visa process. However, 
For a European to visit an African nation, most of our nations, it is like a walk on the beach. It's like going to have a cup of tea. But then that is not the problem. The tragedy is that now for an African to visit a fellow African within the African Union, the visa restrictions in many of our nations among us, between our brothers and sisters, is like trying to brush the teeth of a crocodile. They came, divided us, and they have taught us to keep each other from each other. Then they mingling with each other and making money and growing, but they have taught us to hate each other. But for us to really enjoy the true economic benefits of the Africa continental free trade area, we need to behave like the Europeans and allow for the free movement of people and trade. Our development agencies, such as the African Union Development Agency and others, cannot really succeed when there are all these restrictions among ourselves. To this end, in our contribution to this continental aspiration, Kenya is committed to progressively, and we are moving very fast by the end of this year, to abolish visas to citizens from African Union member states to make it easier to invest and do business in Kenya and across the continent. We are going to open the borders of Kenya. We do not fear our fellow Africans. Come, travel to Kenya. Live, do business in Kenya. Trade, make money in Kenya. And we hope we'll get reciprocity with the rest of you. Let us open our continent so that we can make money and live together. Let us remove the shackles of colonialism that are still embedded in our heads and be able to move forward. <laughs> Mr. Chair, Ma Chairperson, Excellencies, climate change continues to ravage lives and livelihoods of millions. Of we must remain faithful in the implementation of decisions that we make in our sessions. Let me say something that some of you may not like. African Union needs to be self-reliant. As long as the bulk of the AU funds come from outside the African continent, we somehow will find ourselves dancing to the music that is not of our own making. Therefore, we must address the issue of reforms that will enable us to fund our own programs. Funding that comes from our friends is good but it needs to be funding that is in support of our programs and not our lifeline. Therefore, this calls for a critical look at the architecture of the African Union and the way we implement our decisions and the way we fund this continent. It's a discussion that we must have and we must agree to ourselves that we need to take care of ourselves so that others can support us, but we are not being told to dance my teacher used to say that at times when, when you're wearing somebody's suit, you know, and you start dancing, they start telling you slow down because you may ruin that suit. You know, we want to wear our own suits and dance the way we want, Thank not to the so tunes of other people. My wonderful viewers for watching this video together with me from the beginning to the end. Like I said before, if you like what you see here, if you like what I do in this platform, as you have finished watching this video, please hit that red button that says subscribe and put on your notification bell to all notifications. In that way, you'll be able to know when I upload a new video. Share my videos, leave your comments in the comment section constructively. Until I meet your way again in my next video, I still remain your Linda's TV show. Bye-bye.